Hi, this is Carlos Del Hunco at harmonicapractice.com and I'm here in video number two to talk about uh, setting up markers accurately to aid in helping you set up your favorite riffs and licks um, and committing them to memory. So before I do that, I'm going to just show you here, which I didn't show you in the last video, um, you want to save this file and what's going to happen. Um, when I first loaded up this song, um, I loaded up an MP3. Uh, you can also load up AIF or a WAV file. Uh, pretty much there's a huge, uh, quite a large number of formats that this program will take. Um, and now that I've created these markers and this other information, um, like showing the timeline and the way I want uh, uh, visually to, you know, just in a mono view, even though it's still in playback and stereo, um, I'm going to save that. And you can see on my desktop now, it's created this thing called a .xsc file um, next to the MP3. And this, you can see it's a very small file. It's only two kilobytes. And it only, it's like a document file. It just has the marker information, maybe any text I might have added to it. You'll see that soon um, when I set up the markers. And... Um, and that's the MP3, which is a much larger file, showing you the you know 5.3 megabytes as opposed to two kilobytes. All right, so for this transcription, we're going to uh, work on uh, one of my favorite harmonica players, Paul Delay. Um, was a guy, bless his heart, he died back in I think 2007, and um, a really fantastic player. Played a bit of chromatic harmonica as well. Um, a really unique voice. For a blues guy, he had a kind of a, a progressive voice, and if you will, I mean, my definition of progressive is, um, you know, anyone who's pushing the boundaries of something that's a tradition and in, in doing something that's a little bit unique. I mean, I consider myself a progressive player. Um, oh boy, hey, I'm going to get into trouble for this one. Jason Reese is a progressive player, he's stretching the boundaries of what certainly what blues is. Um, uh, a guy called David Bergen was a progressive player back in his day, um, doing something a little bit different than just the idiom, like someone who's into Little Walter and is not just trying to be a Little Walter clone, someone who takes what Little Walter does and then embellishes it. You know, Kim Wilson in his own way, although he's more traditional, um, is, is, you know, progressive in his own way. Um, yeah, so anyway. Um, so here we go. So I'm going into my transcribed song files and finding my mp3 that i want to open up that we're going to mark up and it opens up the raw folder uh the raw file um in this case it's just a um someone put a tape recorder in front of uh, uh on their table where they were having a beer in front of the guitar player and Paul DeLay playing in a bar somewhere. Okay, first we're going to give this solo a listen. Um, I think it's a really fantastic solo. Um, truly inspired and in the moment. Um, and then we'll mark it up and show you how to do that. <laughs> Um, obviously the audience was enjoying it too. So for the sake of this um, lesson and tutorial on how to transcribe, we're going to work and 
um, I'm going to show you how to get the first 12 bars down to memory, maybe even just the first six bars, because the principle of how I work, you'll see as we get into the next, uh, the fourth video actually, um, about how this all works and how you put it together um, to memory without writing anything down. That's the main thing. So a good thing to do when you're creating the markers uh, on the audio spectrum is to kind of expand the view uh, of the part of the song that you're working on. Um, as I said, you could, we, we know that it starts around here. So we're going to just grab that part of the song, enlarge it, and and I'll show you how to do that with key commands in, if, in the next video. Um, so here we have the start. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit, better chance to have accuracy of markers, maybe just better chance, depending on how good a drummer you are, you're going to be hitting your computer keyboard and hitting the letter, uh, the letters to create your markers as it's playing back. Here we go. And then you can see I use the blue marker, the S, to create the beginning of the verse. And then I hit the blue marker again, the, the letter S, for the beginning of the, the second verse of the solo, which we're not going to do in this tutorial. But um, we're going to create now some beat markers. And what we'll do now is uh, we're going to expand maybe just a couple of bars into view here. And it gives us a way to see even more detail of what we're doing as we're creating the markers. So I can see before the downbeat here of the guitar player, um, we want to create a little, I use the beat markers, the black markers, um, which you're supposed to use to delineate every beat. One, two, three, four. I use it to delineate the beginning of a musical phrase. Um, it just seems to be more effective way of using the marker. And you'll see why again as we get into it. So you can see there's a pickup to the downbeat. So let's with. You can see he's doing it right around there. I was a bit late. You can just literally just drag it. You grab the marker and you can drag it to any location. I think it's about there. Um, and often, again, depending the, the, the quality of the audio material and how compressed it is, if it's not too compressed, you can see the spikes in the valleys between the notes of the instruments. Um, and then finishing up the last two bars of the solo, we got this riff here. A little bit light there, I think. You can see just by looking at the audio spectrum. And then we're going to get that the beginning of riff right there. And I think it's more like that. You can visually see it. Looks good. too soon you can hear again you can see how handy this is having an expanded view to make your markers accurate and it will come in handy especially when you're playing it more to tempo and stuff uh, so that's we've just marked up the first 12 bars and if we go back out to an expanded view, we can see the whole solo there. So I can grab it again, expand it. Um, so now I can label this. Uh, I know that this is solo number two, verse one. Um, and you can do that with all the markers if you like. So this is going to be the four chord. We could, if we wanted to, we could type in the four chord there. And then we know the 12 bar goes back to the one chord there. I'm using Roman numerals to delineate. Uh, and then two bars on the one. And we go to the five there. I'm using Roman numeral five. 
four chord, it's going to be there. And the one chord here, back. And the, the other thing that we can do is um, if we want to type in more information or maybe lyrics to a song, we can um, show the text zone by hitting the letter T or by just showing text zone. Excuse me. Um, and as it's playing, let's say I want to type in that he's doing big breath here or something. So I can, you know, double click that marker and type in big breath here, just for instance. I could use it to type in the lyrics. It's, it's, it's pretty handy. Um, so you can see how great this program is for, for navigating. So now we want to save this file. Um, however you want to save it with the expanded view. Um, if we hit save, it's going to ask me to save uh, that. I want to put it into my Paul Delay folder. And now I've saved it and it's going to create a dot, this little dot XSE file. It's going to create one of these with this title right next to the MP3 there. Uh, all right. So that's how um, we create markers and we're going to put them to the test and work on them on the licks. Um, sometimes you, you'll see that you might have made a little... Um, not a very accurate marker and you can fix it as you start working and, and it, it, you'll see again why it comes in handy as we're working um so we'll see you in video number three i'm going to show you um how to uh use some of my basic key commands which i've been doing in this video but i haven't been telling you what i've been doing um so the next video number three is going to show you the basic key commands uh, the ones that i created that are kind of intuitive and there's not really many that you have to know to sort of navigate but it just means that you're you're working on listening in the audio and not fumbling with your mouse to 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 get your your cursor in the right place i can snap to them quickly with key commands and i'll show you that all right thanks a lot this is carlos de at harmonicapractice.com and i'll see you in video number three thanks